So what is up guys? Today we're going to talk about the live stream that INE held um, last week on the 28th, which you can see here on my screen, talking about or answering some questions that people have about the new EJPT exam that is coming out. The INE video is an hour long, so I sat down, I watched the whole thing, and I took notes on the key things that we need to know, and it's summarized here. So, when does the exam come out? So the exam is coming out this summer, they did not give us a date, um, and the summer in the United States is the whole month of June, July, and August. So, it should be coming out within the next couple of months. Um, the beta version is the one that's coming out. So I guess that they may make some modifications depending on the first few people that um, take it and provide some feedback to them and some reviews and they may, may tinker with it, perfect it, and then release the full version. But um, I'm sure that the beta version is going to be pretty much the meat and potatoes of what the exam is and how it's going to look like in, in the future. The beta version is free, by the way. I have the voucher for uh, the AGPT version 1. And as you know, the vouchers, when you buy them, they have a six-month lifetime. So um, they were running a discount, so I paid $150 instead of $200 for the voucher. And it was for the EJPT version 1. But as I told you earlier, then they came out with the EJPT version 2. And I'm like, okay, so I guess I'll use the voucher to take the JPT version 2. But now the beta is free, which um, I'm going to aim to take. Even if I'm not fully ready, I'm going to aim to take the beta just to just to test it out. And, and I can always use my voucher. But um, if I do pass it, I'm thinking about using my voucher potentially for the EJPT version 1. Um, you know, from a certification perspective... It's not the smartest move because, okay, it's like I have EJPT version 1 and 2, um, but we'll see. Maybe I'll transfer it for the ECPPT, which I also um, want to take next, so we'll see. Anyways, those are my plans, but um, yeah, I'm kind of caught in this decision-making. It's like, okay, what do I do with this voucher now? I love that the beta is free, and I want to take that one, but then what does that mean for my voucher? So for me... Maybe I'll do the EJPT version 1, or maybe I'll use it for the ECPPT. So the types of questions that they're going to have, the task-based, the CTF, and the black boxes. And I'm going to explain these. So the task-based, for example, would be... So all of these are questions that you need to answer. That's the, that's the format of the exam. So it's 30 questions that you need to provide the answers for. Some of them are task-based, which means that... Um, Give me the information on X and then you go and then you get that information and plug it in as your answer. Um, some of the other questions are CTF like. So I guess that you'll have to um, pwn a machine and then capture the flag and then paste the flag as your answer. And then the third types of questions, which is really not a third type, is just the types of boxes that we're going to be um, evaluating are uh, black boxes and black box just means that you they don't give you much information on these boxes at all so it's up to you up to the assessor to test use tools to gain all the information possible and map what the network looks like um, what is what end nodes are running on the network what's the operating system what applications are are running on them, services, ports, and all of those things. So all of that information we'll have to investigate ourselves, which is pretty cool because that is the fun part. Moving on to the exam environment, we have, um, it's going to be browser-based. They explained why, and they explained that they did go back and forth, and it was a, a an ordeal because they knew that people wanted VPN, and they were really divided as to <clears throat> as to what to do. And they explained that they actually made a decision to go with browser-based because with browser-based, they didn't want... Their objective was not to test us on 
how to connect to a VPN or if we have VPN issues, how to troubleshoot those issues. Um, they really wanted to keep the exam focused on the information, our methodology, and being able to collect the information from um, the target environment. So, which I understand. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. I, I get that. I can see that. Um, would I have liked VPN better? Yeah, I would like VPN better. That way I can use my machine. I think it's a little more realistic. But I don't see it as a big deal. Not, not for me. So, um, something else that they said about the browser base too. Well, I guess one of the advantages to that is that if you have a medium powered computer, right? You don't have these powerful graphic cards. You don't have a lot of RAM on them. So um, you can still use that laptop because all the processing power is going to happen in the cloud and all you're going to get is, um, you know, you're going to see the computer via your browser. So it doesn't really matter what type of computer you have. If you can connect to the internet and you have a stable internet connection, you can take this exam, which I think is pretty cool. The second piece that they talked about is that the questions are going to be dynamic flagging. Um, so by dynamic flagging, what they mean is that every time you take the test, um, it's going to be different questions. So every person that takes it is going to get different questions. And if you take the test multiple times, you're going to get different questions. So um, that's what they mean by dynamic flagging. So it, it, it adds to the randomness of the exam. So I guess that's pretty cool. Will you have to write a report in this exam? No. And they explained why. They said, listen, we are trying to focus on you learning the foundations. So that's the reason why they didn't include it here. Not because they don't believe that report writing is important, but because this exam is catered to a junior role and they believe that reporting is a function, a skill that you will need for sure in a more senior role. The exam length. So the environment, they said it's 48 hours. Um, the environment is going to be open for 48 hours. You can log in, log out as much as you, as you want. And um, by the way, the questions do not change as you log in and log out, just so you know, it's um, per exam. So you're going to have the same 30 questions, whether you log in once or whether you log in 20 times. Um, the, the exam questions only change by individual, by every exam attempt, if that makes sense. So the environment's going to be up for 48 hours. Um, they did say that they measured it and it'll take somebody who does this, who already works as a pen tester, 46 hours. But for noobs like us, it's going to probably take us 16 to 20 hours. Um, the price. So the exam voucher is going to remain $200 for the this new EJPT. I think we had talked about this in, in an earlier video. Um, but again, the beta version is free and the beta version is coming out this summer. I don't know how long it's going to remain free. I would assume maybe for a couple of months, but that's just me guessing. They did not say how long it's going to how, how long it's going to stay open. The PTS is no longer free. So INE has switched before they would offer the course for free for the EJPT. It's no longer free now it's $39 a month. And I know that you guys have been actually very faithful with my content and letting me know that, hey, because in another video I mentioned, hey, this is free, JPT is the way to go. Um, but somebody let me know that no, actually it's no longer free. It's $39 a month or you can get the annual subscriptions, which is like $750 or something else. And um, so, yeah, so that, that kind of changes the dynamics, right? I mean, $39 a month is not, it's not cheap, right? Try Hack Me, which is a platform. You don't. It, they, it's different to INE and it's different to the AJPT because it's not like you take an exam and they give you a cert certification. Um, it's more of a platform where you learn. Um, you know, you can get that for ten dollars a month, right? And ten dollars a month is way more doable than thirty nine. Now, um, whether or not it is worth it is up to you. Um, but yeah, so, but you kind of need it, right? If you're going to take the EJPT, it kind of feels like you need 
to pay for it. And um, the whole content is 144 hours long. And if you're starting from zero, it's going to take you way more. Um, I can tell you that by experience because I've already been in this journey for about maybe a little over a year for about, yeah, a little over a year now. And at the beginning, you know, I was, I had to learn, um, Linux and the Linux command line and a little bit of, um, bash scripting and then, um, how to deal with files and, um, how to troubleshoot some stuff, how to do Python and, um, not that I know how to write Python, right, but how to um, execute programs or make a file an executable or I don't know, a ton of stuff, right? So I didn't know anything coming in. And um, so if you don't ha know anything coming in, you might benefit from first doing Try Hack Me and, and completing some of the um, learning paths that they have there. And then once you ha feel more comfortable, then you can come here, pay maybe the $39 for a month or for two months, depending on how much time free you have. So if it's 144 hours, the course, and you already have a good foundation, meaning that it'll take you about the 100 and let's say 150, 160 hours. If you spend 40 hours a week, it'll take you about four weeks to complete. If you spend 20 hours a week, then it'll take you two months to to complete, so so on and so forth. Now, if you're going to take, if you have no background, it's probably going to take you twice or triple that amount. So now the $39 a month adds up. So my suggestion to you would be, if you have absolutely no background, start with Try Hack Me, and then uh, come here, pay the monthly, take the course, and uh, take the exam, get certified. So if you have the version one vouchers, they can be transferred to version two. Again, the beta version is free, but after that, um, uh, V1 vouchers for the normal EJPT can be transferred. So the EJPT version one is actually going to be sunset. They didn't say when, but they will remove it. Um, and that's probably going to happen soon. I assume, I would probably think that they'll do it by the end of the year. They'll probably remove it. I think that they want to wait to test the beta version, get all of the feedback, and then um, make their modif modifications, then um, have another group take it, test it, see that it's working well and then remove um, the JPT version one. So I think that the whole process will probably take about six months. So by the end of the year, they'll probably be sunsetting version one. So just be on the lookout if you wanna take that one. For the preparation, they said that the course is enough, um, which makes sense because for EJPT version one, although I haven't taken it, I know for sure from so many reviews that I've read that the course is enough. So for version two, it's the same deal. If you take the course, if you feel comfortable with the course, you should be good. But just remember, um, I have a lot of people say, do the labs twice. So do the entire course and then go back, do the labs again, um, just to make sure that you know them well, that it's smooth, that you can do them, that it's no problem. And, uh, and then you should be good to go. Exam results. So the exam results are gonna get, be given to you right away, which is super exciting. We don't have to wait two weeks, three weeks, a month, three months to get our exam results. You'll know right away whether you passed or failed. And the awesome thing is that they will tell you um, how you did by sections. So by domain, and by objective, you'll know that, okay, this is where I did really poorly, and then you can go back to the course, focus on that, sharpen your skills, and take the exam again. So I included this last information about the hosts because um, the two hosts that we're talking was uh, Jack Reedy, the director of cybersecurity content, and then Amanda Martin, who is the instructional designer. So basically, um, Amanda is in charge of um, 
making sure that the content is designed in a way that is um, effective for the students. And Jack Reedy, I guess, is in charge of the entire department for the cybersecurity content. Um, but I added this here because I noticed that, okay, both of them actually started about a year ago, a year and a half ago. Um, and then about that time too, I and E bought Pentester Academy. You can see them already using the labs from Pentester Academy in the EJPT, which is pretty cool. Pentester Academy has pretty good, good labs. And, um, and they're bringing new people. The instructors are new. Um, I can see I and E making a lot of moves, I guess the, is the point that I'm trying to make here. Um, they're making moves, they're making changes, um, they're growing. So I checked out their company and they have about um, 600 employees, at least on LinkedIn. Maybe they have more. And uh, that's a pretty big company, you know? So when you think about, okay, I see all of the things that they're trying to do. Um, and then you have to, you have to take that with the information that they're starting to charge for the exam now, right? Because um, a lot of work has come to creating the exam. So you have the instructors, they have uh, Josh Mason and Alexi Ahmed, uh, or Hacker Sploit, who is awesome, um, doing the course. Um, you have Amanda Martin, who was part of designing the course, right? Testing it. Um, fixing it, you know, making it more effective. You have Jack Reedy, who's the director. So, and then you have all of the other back end processes and all of the other people who are working in the back end. So yeah, you kind of, um, you know, these people need to get paid. So, uh, you kind of need to start, um, charging for, for it. So, so I, I get, I, I get what's happening, right? So I understand why they went from free to starting to charge for this since there was so much manpower, there were so many people involved in making this new exam that they need to charge for it to pay for all of the investments made, right? So, um, but yeah, anyways, it's it's the nature of the beast, right? You need to be a, a business. I think that I'm I'm not against businesses making money. I think businesses need to make money. If you don't make money, you won't survive. Um, but as long as, you know, they care about the people and they provide really good value and um, at a fair price. So $39, I think, is is not terrible. I don't think it's bad, but um, I can definitely see it being an obstacle for some people. It's not cheap either, right? It's not super expensive, but it's not cheap either. So anyways... I hope you liked this video. If you did, um, leave me a comment below. Ask some questions. Uh, put your notes. Are you taking? Are you taking the exam? Have you taken the exam? Um, are you studying for it right now? What do you think? What do you think of the changes to the course? Um, are you going to take the exam now in the summer? What do you think about the changes to the price tag? Do you think it's it's is it worth it? What do you think? I want to hear from you guys and. Um, yeah, I'll see you in my next video. All right. See you later. Bye.